Hey traders, hopefully you're having a really good weekend so far. We're really going to be taking a look at one main focus for this video. And that's basically why I think BTC is still looking strong and we're not in a bear market completely. Um, obviously, this long term chart looking at the two day is a very obvious head and shoulders. If you've been in the crypto market for a hot minute, you know that everyone's talking about this head and shoulders. I'm not exactly sure the percentage, but I would say more than 50% of people are looking either to reduce their position in their overall exposure within the crypto market or even potentially short the crypto market in the short term because of this reversal pattern. I personally think that we are not coming to an end of this bull cycle, um, not only just because looking at 2017, we had a pretty long secular bull run, and before that, this chart doesn't show it, but we've seen a pretty solid secular bull run and a bear run kind of looking at the different halving periods for BTC, and that affected and impacted the overall cryptocurrency market to a point where altcoins are really following the same price action of what Bitcoin is doing, just a little bit delayed. And during the later half of the bull run, they usually appreciate at a much greater rate than BTC is the overall trend that we've seen. So I'm personally sticking to the macro chart looking at the previous bull run and kind of speculating that we do still have legs within this current run, but that's a lot of speculation. Let's jump into the more technical factors. We're first going to be looking at the actual price action itself accompanied with the volume. So using a little bit of VSA, uh, my personal belief, we did initially create an ascending zone right here, but this is looking to form a potential descending zone where we see a series of lower highs and lower lows not really contracting the price action, but we are pushing up against this major level of $30,000 for Bitcoin. Now, just mind you, if we do fall and break and hold below this 30,000 zone, my opinion will change. You can't be super hard headed. If you're in the markets, you have to accept when you are wrong and um, kind of adapt and shift to the different market conditions. But right now, I still see this as a potential bull run that is kind of halfway through. So this is the first major correction where there's a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. We see the fear and greed index at a significant fear where it's at like 20 or 25 for the last basically month. Maybe it's at 30, but very low in extreme fear for the past month. And I'm viewing this as a great opportunity to buy the dip before the next secular kind of cycle starts within the bull run, which is that next leg higher. So let's take a quick look here and dive into a smaller time frame. This is first initially looking at the two day. We see a key level of support, key level of descending zone, and we break it down into a smaller time frame. We'll discuss the smaller time frame supports as well. So um, as we can see, as we dive a little bit closer, we see a strong push. We saw a pullback and I thought this was a potential head and shoulders, but we unfortunately could not hold. And then we saw the squeeze up puke out the price to its target and we'll talk a little bit more about that on a smaller time frame so let's look at the time frame on a smaller uh, uh look at let's look at the volume on a smaller time frame on a 12 hour chart we see lots of buy pressure not just within this major low of 30k but also we can see throughout the consolidation we see overall more buy pressure than sell pressure which in my opinion is an indication of volume accumulation rather than distribution i personally value and and I'm looking at this zone as an accumulation zone, not a distribution zone for the major whales within the market. And looking at the retail traders, this would be all the retail trading platforms for exchanges that people are using, not counting DEXs, decentralized exchanges. And then we're adding them all up together, dividing them how much, dividing them by how many there are, and gives you a good average for the retail trader volume. And overall, if you're looking at a different time frame, not just the 12 hour, we do see that there is buy pressure significantly around that 30k zone, and it's overpowering the sell pressure, creating a narrative for volume accumulation. So when we do go into a smaller time frame, we'll look at this push this pullback and then the potential double bottom that we're seeing right here. So if we are breaking it down on a smaller time frame, yet again, we see on the six hour chart, major buy pressure as well as within the candles, you see the candle closing right at that 31, 30 K zone. Uh, the bear is trying to push down the price below the major level of demand, but the bulls are holding strong at this zone, pushing it 
well above the open of the candle on this six hour candle um, and really creating a engulfing candle because it actually did close higher than the previous open, which is great to see lots of bullishness. We saw a rebound in on a smaller time frame. Let's just uh, take that away. I believe I moved something, maybe not. Oh, that's what I moved. There we go. And then when we're looking at the next kind of pullback, as we can see here, this was the potential head and shoulders that we were talking about where you see the right uh, left shoulder right shoulder and this was a head right here we had a nice pullback validating that zone as well as the descending zone for this channel so around this zone we were looking pretty good in my personal opinion because we had the reverse head and shoulders as well as the well respected descending channel hold the price up against this major zone of confluence which did look pretty solid we had a little bit of a rise up but then we were holding the series of um, higher highs just so slightly which isn't great to see and then we had a more ascending support zone create a squeeze and a contraction within the volatility once that did puke to the downside we saw our target which was made from here just looking at geometry and the target was made right at thirty thousand dollars so this reversal is complete uh for this i guess you could say this continuational pattern is complete from this initial push this was the push continuational consolidation formation and this is that second push but we are not seeing an actual break of this level of support if we're seeing a continuation pattern obviously we should be seeing continuation and if this is just a nice consolidation before it actually breaks to the downside i will have to change my thesis and my view of the overall market which is then going to be looking at potential downside and reducing my exposure and risk on assets but as of right now i still do think that this is going to hold and we're looking at a small time frame here like the six hour and going on to a smaller time frame we see lots of wicks to the downside we see more buy pressure than sell pressure coming into the market um, don't love to see a no demand right there but overall we still do see lots of wicks to the downside indicating buy pressure coming into the market when we are looking at a smaller time frame not much more that we're going to be extrapolating from this overall um, time frame other than just looking at the volume uh, we do see slight contraction where we see reduction of volume coming into play um, it would be nice in my opinion to see let's get our brush right here this zone break you kind of see a head and shoulders right there that would be a great confirmation for us to potentially look for a higher or lower high I guess you could say on a larger time frame where you see this zone right here but it'd be great to see then something like this where you see a higher high from this zone you see a little bit of a pullback within this resistance zone right here as we can see you see a series of lower high lower high lower high and if we get a lower high here then we can get our nice ascending zone right here and then we we basically have our formation if you understand our wedge formation um, we're looking for three very distinctive waves in my opinion this is wave one that is a very poorly drawn chart um, let's go back to our brush we see our wave one this would be our wave two and then a slight wave three doesn't have to be very significant of a pullback and then we get the initiation for the momentum and the shift in trend so i think there's a little bit of consolidation to be had here but it does still look like this 30k zone is going to hold um, there was a lot of hesitation initially when we were on this zone, but it did break up. Great to see a continuational ascending wedge formation to the downside. It wasn't great to see, but we are holding this 30k zone very well, just like we did during the middle of June there, not too long ago. So when we're looking at a larger time frame, I do think that this is going to hold. We'll take a look at some other indicators that suggest uh, this being an accumulation zone as well. Um, and then looking on our larger time frame, we do see this larger, I guess you could say bull flag when you are looking at a very large time frame form right here, where it's potentially creating a bull flag and slowly consolidating, not to the previous high of 19K. In my opinion, I don't think we're going to go there, but we're creating a nice bullish flag before the next continuational push is my overall bias. So I do think that this is going to hold lots of confluence here. And that's my speculation as well as looking at the broader market risk on assets are doing well SMP is doing well stocks in general are doing well indicating risk on exposure um, is still present and uh, appetite for risk is present and I would say Bitcoin is included in that as well so now we're going to go on to a different chart that's kind of breaking it down from a large time frame into a small time frame trying to understand what the price action is indicating and what the te technicals are showing along with the volume there 
So that's going to be my view on the S or the, uh, the BTC chart. Let's just go to a smaller time frame, like the two hour, and we have a good understanding of where we're currently at right now. Next chart we're going to be looking at is the hash rate. Um, we have seen a significant dip in the hash rate, and there's been a bit of a discussion of like what came first, the chicken or the egg. Hash rate fluctuations impacting the price of Bitcoin or the Bitcoin price impacting the hash rate. Um, many of you know there has been an exodus for miners in China, so that makes sense that there is a decrease in the overall hash rate. I don't think necessarily it's a bad thing because there's more decentralization, more miners are moving out of China that is very centralized and going elsewhere, maybe somewhere in the US. That would be an overall positive sentiment in my view at least. But something to keep in mind, we did see an uptick here. I think there's going to be a little bit more confidence and conviction um, for the increase in the hash rate once this passes the moving average right here. Uh, not saying that's like the definitive move, but usually when we do see a cross in that, we kind of shift in trend. And as we can see in the previous past of the hash rate decreases, that is usually the case. They're not very long dips. And if we take kind of a look at the worst of the worst, this major bearish push that we had from around 61-ish, 62 all the way to 32, we saw a pretty significant dip in the hash rate, as we can see. But once we started to see the increase in hash rate, we started to see a recovery in the BTC markets as well. So um, we do see a slight potential where we see a lower high form. We stopped dipping but I think there's some consolidation to be had before we actually start to see that confirmation and hash rate increasing, but it does look promising in my view. Hash rate isn't everything though. We can see the hash rate dipped during the October 2020 time when we were calling the bull run initiation and um, the yeah, hash rate was dipping. So it's not like a direct correlation or anything, but we have seen a significant reduction in the hash rate. And I think once the miners are kind of established in their new locations and new miners coming in because of the reduction of the hash rate, making it cheaper to mine BTC and making it more lucrative, it's really gonna fill the gaps and the hash rate will increase and that will create a more positive sentiment for the overall market, which then will create more capital inflows into BTC and that will make a more um, positive impact for all coins as well. So that's going to be the overall um, analysis on the hash rate. We don't really go into a smaller time frame because it doesn't really matter too much. This is a more of a macro view in my personal opinion or macro indicator, I should say. So that's going to be the two different indicators that we're going to look on this one. And the final uh, indicator that we're going to be looking at somewhat of an indicator is going to be the Bitcoin commitment of traders, which is uh, caught in short. And this is BTC caught right there. And what this indicates, uh, we can even take a look at the inputs or the settings. We can see institutional traders in terms of net inflows, outflows. We see the moving average. Don't really like looking at those too often. We see professional traders and we even see retail. I would rather view the Bitcoin volume indicator that we've created internally at Performante, but you do have that option there as well to select. But the two main focuses for this chart is going to be the percent opus open interest held by largest four longs. So the open interest in the largest four institutions are um, usually minors and then the shorts as well. So basically the long and shorts of the whales. And we're going to be looking at two different uh, items within the indicator. The first one is just how much selling, how much shorts are currently open. That gives you a good indication of potential times where you should be worrying a little bit. And then we see the times where there is a reduction in the difference between the shorts and longs. And these have proven to be pretty lucrative opportunities because you see a reduction in the shorts and you see an increase in the longs in institutional buyers and sellers, not the retail, not the hype or euphoria or the sentiment. This is real numbers coming from the CME, the, the futures contracts for Bitcoin. So we can see out of the four largest buyers and sellers, in the previous history, we've seen a decrease in sellers and increase in buying overall in March. We saw a nice big pump, uh, very distinct during the December 2019 pump. Not a major pump, but we did see a pretty great move to the upside when breaking this descending zone right there. Another great observation and opportunity where you see a dip in sellers and increase in buyers in the institutional level, which is a buy signal indicating that we should be going long following the smart money. And then you did see that price action move to the upside here. And same thing, massive sell-off 
during the worst of the COVID crash, massive buying opportunity. And we did see that whales were buying for the institution level. And again, we saw a decrease in selling, increasing buying the distance between the sellers and the buyers are decreasing giving you an indication that we should be looking for long opportunities and another great buy signal given there as well and the same thing i'm not going to go over it the whole time but we see sellers coming down buyers increasing where there is a reduction in the distance between the sellers and the buyers and then you have another buy signal something to note is if you can look at the sellers which is that top red line it's actually been decreasing substantially since we really started the bull run since around october 2020 when we were calling the initiation of the bull run we have been seeing a reduction in the shorts reduction in the supply for the four largest institutions in the market in the Bitcoin market which is fantastic to see and compared to for example the um, proximity of where the buyers and sellers are where they're meeting or where they're close to we're at a much lower level within this current pullback which is to me indicating that the smart money the whales are selling more than they were initially um, or selling less, sorry, than initially because they are holding for the longer term. They are selling less now than they were in July 2020 or March 2020. They're selling less and they're slowly buying more. In my opinion, this is a great opportunity when you're looking at the smart money data because if there's less selling going on, they are speculating in the future that there is going to be appreciation in whatever they're holding in this case this is bitcoin and at a later point in time we will see increasing in selling like we saw in the spring of in the summer of 2019 where we see massive outflows lots of dumping of btc onto the market and then you saw consolidation for like a year and a half two years so we can see that smart money has been right and it's not they're not going to be right every single time but to me another indication that this is the bottom and we are kind of close to that final accumulation zone before we take that next leg higher is because we see smart money decreasing the amount of selling that's occurring and overall increasing the amount of buying which is creating another signal where there is a compared to history a very limited and short distance between the sellers and buyers, which is a great opportunity if you're looking at uh, potential buy opportunities from smart money. So that's gonna be my overall bias for why I think BTC is going to be holding this 30K zone or very close to it. If it does break, I don't expect it to be a very long drawn out consolidation to the downside. I expect it to be a quick move to the downside. A lot of people are going to get liquidity because they have stop losses. They may have leveraged longs that they've placed during this consolidation. Maybe even like a two, three X, you will get liquidated with not much price movement. If we are going to see something that is as scary as like what Michael Burry is talking about or um, some other bears within the market. So hopefully this has given you some light on if you are a bear, the other side, the opposing side for your trade, basically, if you're short, I'm a buyer, I'm opposing your overall bias. So that's my reasoning for why I think the continuation will keep on trend uh, in my personal opinion. I do not think that we're in a completely new trend. This is a bear market. Where I will be wrong is that 30K zone break. If we break 30K very, very clearly, very cleanly, I'm going to be a lot more hesitant in saying that this bull run is still going to continue. If we see a recovery above 30K quite quickly, that would change my mind, but I'm gonna be very patient and ensure that we are playing the game correctly if we do see enough bearish indications. I, I don't wanna be a permable, um, I don't think I am, just because we have been bullish since really this pullback. A lot of people were expecting it to continue to like 10, 12K, pulling back to that major symmetrical triangle formation, but I do not expect it to happen. I think there's gonna be a lot of money on the sidelines that's gonna be coming into the market once it does start to pick up, and that's going to create the momentum needed to break the 65K high and then surpassing that 75K to 100K, which is that next major target for us. So hopefully this has shed some light on our view Hopefully, if you do or if you do have like a negative or a, a bearish viewpoint, I guess, on crypto, 
Um, please drop in the comments. I do love reading them and understanding how people are viewing the market because it gives me a, a good pulse on what's going on and I'm pretty open-minded as to different trading ideas or methods or systems that allow you to see the market differently than I do. So thank you very much. If you do find this useful, educational, entertaining, anything like that, it would be greatly appreciated if we do get a thumbs up and if you do subscribe, we know that we should continue to make videos like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this short and sweet recording of why we think that the BTC bull run is not over and why we think that this uh, bearish correction within the longer term bull run is almost at completion, mainly weighing on the commitment of traders and looking at the longer term time frame. Um, those are going to be the big ones, but also on the smaller time frame, we do look at the VSA and the candle formations as well for that extra bit of confidence and validation. So um, like I said, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And until next time, have a good one, traders.